Six years ago, I was in a bookstore and browsing its comic slash graphic novels shelves when I ran across this book, Blue by Pat Grant. It first caught my eye because of its hardcover landscape format, something that always intrigues me. And then as I flipped through the pages because of its unique art and color style. It was published by Top Shelf Comics who had put out some comics that I'd really enjoyed. So I bought it, I read it, and it ended up being one of my favorite reads of the year, comics or otherwise. And over the years, it's continued to be one of my favorites. It's one of those books that's really stuck in my mind and uh, one I think about quite often and I've also bought a couple of copies of this to give to other people to read including my brother-in-law who was very intrigued by the description I gave him of this book. In the next six years I never ran across any other comic by Pat Grant but just a couple of weeks ago I read about a new comic that he had come out with. In this lockdown situation there's no way I'm getting any books delivered to me so I got in touch with him to see if there was a soft copy he could would, uh, send my way and he was generous enough to email me a PDF of his new book which I read and also loved. In this video I'd like to talk about both Blue as well as his newest book The Grot but also a little bit about reading hard copy versus digitally and even maybe shopping in a brick and mortar bookstore versus getting things online. So let's dive right into two terrific comics by Pat Grant. One of the reasons why people I talk to about Blue have been intrigued has been the way I choose to describe it. Sometimes I say it's an autobiographical science fiction story. Sometimes I say it's like uh, The Body by Stephen King or the movie based on it, Stand By Me, meets District 9. And neither of these things are very witty or very original because the magnificence of this comic really lies in the fact that it can't be summarized uh, in those bite-sized things. It is an ambiguous ambitious work which is all the more impressive because it's Pat Grant's debut book. It deals with themes of xenophobia and racism, immigration and uh, displacement along with things like poverty, abuse in ways that are elegant and sophisticated and not at all exploitative. At the same time it is also a science fiction story. And one of the unique things for me is it's an Australian comic that is steeped in an Australian identity, something that I'm not at all familiar with. Blue tells the story of three children from very lower income households and families uh, called bogans. That's a term used to describe the semi-urban, sort of like an Australian redneck from what I understand in this book. These kids also spend a lot of their time on the beach and are surfers. They're cutting school to go surfing initially before they decide to go looking for this body. And this is where the real Australian aspect of things start coming into the story for me. The language, the slang that they use, the territorialism, the localism is terrifically presented because it all feels really genuine and authentic. You as an outsider aren't given a legend or a key to try to decipher these things. The language just exists. The attitudes just exist. The world around you is just given. And this includes, and this is the other part of the story aliens. These are foreigners to their shores who are coming over in boats but they're also quite literal aliens tentacled creatures who look nothing like the human beings who inhabit the rest of the story. But the story doesn't treat them as aliens from outer space. The story just treats them as foreigners as people who are different and have come here with different cultures, different behavior. This whole story is being given to us as a memory. There is a frame story of one of the children grown up and narrating the story and the cultural differences are shown over a period of time to have completely transformed this town that this kid used to live in. As an adult, what he sees is very different from the childhood town that he remembers. And we can see that these aliens who had just started making their appearance all those years ago have now 
taken over the town, and this is given to us explicitly. There's graffiti on the walls, uh, which the aliens can't seem to stop drawing. Everywhere serves noodles, which is the favorite food of these aliens. And the town looks to us to have been transformed from some sort of an idyllic memory to something a lot more uh, dirty and a lot more ghettoized. And this is the part of the story that actually exists mainly in the background. Most of it is about these kids all those years ago taking this trip. But this idea where people are racist and what they're racist about and what they're xenophobic about may have grounding in some real details that they're latching onto. Even the images given to us, are they pure images or are they colored by memory? Are the things that are idyllic truly idyllic or was there nastiness and horrible stuff even before these changes occurred? And when we see these changes, changes, uh, are we not somehow justified in being xenophobic? Are we not justified in feeling that things are being changed and not for the better? These are delicate and subtle questions. And the best thing about this book is it doesn't try to present answers. It doesn't try to present a lesson. It just gives you characters, again, characters who are not necessarily likable, but gives you things to hold on to, gives you things to sympathize or empathize with, and then gives you aliens uh, who you never really get much of a glimpse into, who don't really feature into that story all that much. And then you, as the reader, have to make up your own mind about how these aliens are judged, what role these aliens play. Are there actually sides that you will either be on this side or that side? Is the truth of the matter not a lot more complex? And it's exactly that kind of approach that I find to be so sophisticated and so mature in this kind of storytelling, all within the trappings of this coming-of-age story of children and this science fiction story of aliens coming to our world, not in spaceships, but on literal ships across the ocean. These are the things that put Blue, for me, onto a completely different level of comics. But all of this is of course, put forward with a terrific art style, something that reminds me of um, Japanese art as much as it does of Jim Woodring, uh, whose Frank I have now mentioned on a couple of different occasions on this channel. The line work is terrific, and even the thematic use of blue, the, the reason why this book is called Blue is no coincidence or throwaway little reference. It echoes and resonates with the story. These alien creatures are blue, but also so the blood of the humans in the story, I think, is blue because of a line that just is casually thrown in there. There's a lot that can be mined from this story, and the more you read it, uh, the more you discover to enjoy and love about it, which is the way that I think most great art works. After Blue, I looked for other Pat Grant books, but didn't find any, but I did find a short piece online, which designed as a webcomic was easy to read for me, given my problems with digitized comics. Turmina Video was a devastating autobiographical comic, which I'll link in the description below. But it was also a short piece and I was left wanting something more, which is why I was really excited a couple of weeks ago to see a post by Pat Grant, which a friend of mine shared, uh, in which uh, Mr. Grant was talking about a new book he had out. He was looking for people who would review it online and I got in touch with him said, I don't have that big a channel, but I'm a big fan of Blue and I would love to take a look at his new book. He immediately sent me the PDF of uh, his new book, which I read in one sitting. This book is called The Grot, and if I was to try to put together a similar elevator pitch that I did for Blue, I would say this is like um, an apocalyptic story like The Road or The Book of Eli or uh, Mad Max meets Deadwood. Again, I realized later that this wasn't very original of me. This tells a story set in a dystopian Australia where for some reason, uh, which has never quite gotten into, fuel doesn't exist anymore and all energy is the energy that is provided by human bodies and effort. So all vehicles are pedaled or pulled and pushed, which gets things very close to slavery or at least extremely indentured labor. And the wealth and class systems have just gone haywire as you 
would expect them to do with society divided into very interesting types of haves and have nots. There's also this algae that's being farmed and mined that is worth more than gold. And the grot of the title is a gigantic swamp in which a city of millions of people has uh, grown almost overnight and to which prospectors are flocking to every day while there are also a huge number of people looking to leave it. All of this stuff is not given to you in direct exposition. It's stuff that you piece together little by little in this, again, wonderfully illustrated, uh, very uh, ugly and beautiful art at the same time. I, uh, ugly because of the things it's showing you, the swamp and the disease and the filth, and beautiful because the line work is just incredible, this time accompanied by some amazing coloring, uh, coloring that almost makes it look like a children's book, uh, something that you would see uh, in um, Reina Telgemeier's books or maybe Lucy Nisley's uh, Relish. Uh, bright pastel colors uh, telling the story of this sort of frontier town, a disgusting, horrible frontier town of con men and thieves and murderers right next to entrepreneurs and prospectors. The story, like Blue, focuses on children. There are adults, they occupy for the most the background, but this is a far more epic and uh, expansive story than Blue was, which was a lot more intimate. But just like Blue, it seems to have a lot on its mind, talking about, as I said, class and about material wealth and culture, about dreams and aspirations, but also about thievery, trickery, robbery, and what roles these things play in a society that has collapsed and the new one that's taken its place. I found myself absolutely enthralled by this book. The fascination that I have with a dystopia as well as with westerns are perfectly captured and merged together in this, adding to that a certain level of uh, con men and trickery uh, that is also something that is very appealing to me. It seems in some ways a lighter read than Blue, but it does have more violence, more bloodshed, more grunginess than Blue does. Because as soon as I got this, I jumped straight into the PDF to read the story. I didn't read any of the marketing materials. I didn't read any of the summaries. And I didn't even look at the cover, the front cover and the back cover, which was a separate file in the folder sent to me. I didn't realize that this is the first book in a planned series. So when I finished the book, I thought I was done with it. And in some ways, I think I prefer the way I read it. Uh, of course, it's not a spoiler because anyone who reads this book will read the cover and the back cover first. Uh, so you will know that this is book one. But I almost think that it's a mistake because the way that these materials are putting this across, at least to me, came across as if it's a children's adventure story with a very weird setting. And the darkness and the despair and the the cruelty that I got in this book is maybe mitigated by thinking about it as the first chapter in a lot of things to follow. But that's just a small and very personal observation because of the way I read it, which is interesting because I think the way you read things does make a difference. I think Blue, certainly, I would not even have picked it up if I hadn't been in a physical bookstore looking at something that looks like this. I was, as I said, interested in this format and then when I open this book and turn these pages, the way that the story unfolds, particularly, particularly when you look at something like this, which is the world as it exists today with these aliens having transformed this town, and then you turn the page to see the exact same double page spread, but the way the town looked in the past, this is something that as a physical turning of pages, you can keep going back and forth between these two, checking every single angle, every single nook and cranny to see how it's been changed. This is something that I don't think digital comics can do. And this is something that I think uses the format and uses the layout perfectly. There's a reason and a purpose behind this design. As I said, Grot was very different. I read this on my computer and unlike Turmina video, which was designed for the web, uh, this is designed to be a print book. So I did read it on my vertical monitor, the one that, uh, that old monitor that I have for video editing. So I was able to scroll through the pages vertically and, and 
and get the PDF to line up in a particular way that I found particularly pleasing. I found that to be a much more interesting way to read a print comic digitized than I've tried before on the widescreen monitors. But there are a number of double page spreads as well as full page splashes like when the city is revealed uh, to the arrivals, when they see certain areas laid out in front of them that do very similar things to those spreads in blue that I think would diminish a little bit by me not being able to read them in print and see both those pages in the same way. However, if I read Turmina video on this monitor and scroll through that webcomic uh, the way it's meant to be, there's no problem with it at all and it reads perfectly. I'm definitely going to be getting myself a physical copy of The Grot as soon as I can and read it again in that form. I can't wait for the next volumes, but even as a standalone read, I think it works wonderfully well. Whether or not you can get to a physical bookstore, order online, get deliveries right now, I strongly recommend both Blue and The Grot by Pat Grant. These are wonderful comics that will stick with you long after you're done reading them, that stand up to rereading in ways that many, many comics will not. And in particular, Blue, I think is just one of my favorite comics. It uses the comics medium as well as the format, the production, every single aspect of it to wonderful, wonderful effect. I hope you enjoyed this look at two comics by Pat Grant. I love reading your questions and comments, so leave them below. This has been For the Love of Comics. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you at the next video. <laughs>